Rithi, good morning to you. Good morning. This is more than film. This is a lot more. Explain to us what it is. Oh, if you can say it looks like a multimedia uh, creation, artistic creation. It's a combined the uh, classical uh, music, Khmer, traditional music Khmer, with the Western music instrument, with the choir and the film. It's a uh, it's very complex because uh, most of the time we, when we want to listen well to music, we don't want to see uh, images. Or when to watch the film, sometimes you have a lot too much music. <laughs> you also have to balance all the thing. But uh, it's a challenge for uh, us and f also for the um, Hem Supi and uh, all the mu Cambodian musicians to, you know, we ask very traditional in Cambodia, so we try to transform something uh, original to uh, like a process of uh, creation, a new way of expressing or, or, or feeling or sentiment, etc. How much Cambodian music was lost during the genocide? Because I remember being shocked to learn when we were in Cambodia that even recipes had got lost yeah. through uh, the genocide. What happened uh, to music? Oh, I, I think that after the Khmer Rouge time, we have only few master of music for dance, for example. There are four or five dancers who survive, four or five doctors. And, uh, uh, I think that the Cambodian people, as it was very, very courageous to rebuild it in the last uh, 25 years or 30 years, little by little. This was, I mean, we, we need to remind people, or if they didn't know, to explain to them that this was an attempt to obliterate anyone with an education, anyone with any learning, anyone with any particular skills. Yeah, but... Through an entire society. Yeah, at least you talk about the... Uh, I don't know how to explain what is the genocide or what is the uh, crime against humanity. But it's, uh, it's I tell you, uh, two million deaths and seven and half it's it's a lot in it's nothing including many members of your own family really. yeah i can feed my family but uh, what it's mean two million dead it's it's a lot it's nothing because for me it's two million different person two million history different history you know so it's very difficult for us to to come through that because uh, each individual is not uh, have the same suffering and that genocide, and then it's not about killing only. It's about uh, dehumanization. It's about the uh, destruction of identity or culture. Uh, you know, it's, uh, we talk ab about uh, of death a lot, but we don't talk about uh, how the culture is uh, also destroyed. So it's a big ask, isn't it, to have the arts bring back uh, healing and culture and uh, and reinvent, really, yeah. the way in which you express yourselves? Uh, art, for us, is yes, it's, uh, you are true, it's like a process of healing. You know, I I started making film 40 years ago, but I... 40? Yeah, 40 years. Oh, wow. But it's looked like to me I make the same one film. You know, it's uh, because I nobody asked me to do that uh, to have to give testimony about uh, uh, the Khmer Rouge time, but it's my I feel it's my it's my responsibility to do that because you are we are I'm not here by because I'm strong than other I'm not I'm here because somebody else give me the ticket <laughs> and get into training and, I, and uh, just to pay back and to tell what is this pe person who helped me to survive. In bank school, it's, it's like the process like that, you know, this bank school is a, it's a process of mourning, it's like a uh, requiem, you know, requiem, you rest in peace, it means rest in peace, rest in peace for the dead and rest in peace for also the, the survivor. So we've seen these Truth and Reconciliation Commissions in South Africa, in Northern Ireland, in Cambodia, we, we, we've got a model which, amongst other people, Gareth Evans, you've been responsible for refining. Does it always work? Is it, a, is it adaptable for whatever circumstance? 
every country's situation is different and you have to be totally sensitive to the internal dynamics of each place. And memory works in different ways. The desire for recovery of memories, the desire of being confronted with those memories varies. Uh, the desire to move on can be very, very strong in the early years after a crisis, a catastrophe, and I think, uh, Riti, you've described that as being the prevailing sense in Cambodia for quite a few years after the Khmer Rouge were finally removed from power. But eventually, I think it's tremendously important that these stories are told, that the next generations learn about exactly what happened and why. And I think what you've done with this requiem and in your earlier film work is just fantastic in terms of simultaneously recreating a culture that was on its knees, but also playing into that need for memory, need for understanding and need for a sense of... Um, of just the horror of it all and the need for justice to, to respond to it. So I'm looking forward very much to seeing this on Saturday night, as I think a great many members of the Melbourne community will. This is the, the world premiere, as I understand it, and you're taking it back, yeah. to, you're taking it back to Phnom Penh yeah. um, in a year or two's time after, after giving us the first opportunity, which is fantastic. But I think that the, the, we, we need to use all kind of support, like Im image is very important because the new generation of people now don't believe you if there's no image. You can talk about genocide, but they don't believe. Right. You must bring them the images because they are on smartphone, they are on Facebook, they are in everything. They read less than one book a year. So you have to find a different medium to bring them back to interest on their history. It's very important. How is the education system dealing with both the arts and, um, and an understanding of history? Uh, the art now, you have, uh, we practice it very little. We have a, a university of fine art, but art is not at the university, it's not in daily life, you know. But uh, I, frankly, I did not understand very well because it's for me, uh, art is in the DNA of the Cambodian people. And uh, it's uh, I, the, the, the base of everything, you know, they, they belong to what, they have a very solid, uh, strong, uh, uh, traditional uh, oral history, etc. We must uh, use it. And I've, I think that this, um, I did not, I never see a development in the country without uh, cultural development. Mm. Well, and it's, not, it, it's integral to it. Um, popularizing it and telling the story is absolutely crucial. Did you have much to do with Angelina Jolie and the film that is, I think, soon to come out? As it's come out already. It's come out yes, already? Yeah. Yeah, it's First uh, They Killed My Father. Yeah. Though Angela, Angelina Jolie is depend what, from what angle you look at her. <laughs> I'm, I've never met her before, but I, li I love her very much because she's a... Uh, uh, authentic person and she come and she just asked me that uh, uh, I th she, they, she want to make the film in Khmer and uh, you know in Vienna in global world if you want the big studio to produce your film you have to make a Chinese actor to shoot in English and uh, even the Schindler list is shoot in the Nazi speak English you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? it's a global film oh. so and, and you have a global star come so I want to make it in Khmer so good I say if you want to make the film with us I'm with you but about us maybe I cannot go so he's, uh, she's very, very uh, respectful and um, uh, very close to people in Cambodia. Uh, people there love her very much. And now the film tour, in the, we'll tour in the Cambodia. And this is a very important, you know, sometimes my film, nobody come to watch my film. It's so complicated. So uh, the killing film by your lunch of a million of people oh, extra go, go go to watch this you know we uh, th this is such a complimentary film yeah extraordinary film and and gareth the other issue with all of these same um global events that we deal with all around the world again and again and again whether we're looking at cambodia or other countries corruption comes up over and over again as 
um, sometimes an excuse, but often a reason why international efforts don't achieve as much as they were expected to. I don't want to embarrass our guests, but Cambodia is not immune to corruption. I'll simply leave it at that. What do we do globally? Well, we're getting better at blowing the whistle on it, Transparency International and a lot of conditionality now being attached by many governments to aid programs and other forms of support they're giving to various countries. Naming and shaming in international forums is increasing. It's not easy, it's not quick, uh, but in Cambodia it's a real issue. An even bigger issue in Cambodia at the moment, I have to say, Riti, I don't know how you feel about it, is the authoritarianism, the anti-democratic character of my former blood brother, Hun Sen, who uh, has turned into a complete authoritarian. When we put together the, the peace plan all those years ago, um, I must confess, I had doubts with the, the democracy and human rights dimensions that this would take off. What it was really about was delivering peace. Well, we succeeded in that. Mm -hmm. But I'm afraid uh, we haven't done very well on the other two fronts. How do you, you feel about that? You're steering, I trying to steer yeah. a course around this, but you must be uncomfortable. No, fr frankly, I think it's not only about Cambodia. It's a failure of the democratic world. It's not only us. It's a failure in the democratic world. You, had, you see what uh, Trump do, what everybody do. It's not only Cambodia. It's uh, like an atomic channel, you know. When there's a failure in the leader of the democracy, you know, there's failure everywhere. You talk about uh, immigration, not refugee, but who create a refugee, a movement of refugee. Now, today, we have the uh, most number of refugees who move in the world. This never happened in our history. But where they come from? Who provoke it? Who... Who is about the origin of this all? But I think that we, we we are better to sit together around a table and think about that. How much support have you had for this creative cultural enterprise of yours yeah. from the government, from Hun Sen? I mean, you're mainly talking about the Khmer Rouge era, and I guess you've got common ground there. But has he been, has the government been supportive? No, government never helped me, just gave me a building, sadly, I want them to, I wish them to involve more, because the storage archive or uh, kit archives uh, from the Khmer Rouge time is not my duty, it's a duty of the government, but uh, unfortunately uh, I have to do that, but uh, they just give me a uh, building free, and I restore it, I do it, I have not, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, you, we, we are not, we are, every, every uh, living people are politic, but it's when where you are and when, <laughs> when you can express it, uh, and, uh, but um, we have, we are artists, we have our politic position, but uh, I just, uh, I never believe that the democracy can go to Cambodia in five or ten years at the no. beginning. No. I, I no. always think that it takes us generations. Yep. A Requiem for Cambodia, Bunk Sokol World Premiere, created by our guest, guest Riti Pan and him, Sophie, is on it as part of the Melbourne Festival and then goes to Cambodia. A Requiem for Cambodia. Gareth Evans' book, Incorrigible Optimist, a political memoir. Lynn Allison has been my co-host. Riti Pan, thank you indeed for joining us. Gareth Evans, good luck. And Lynn Allison, thank you. This has been The Conversation Hour.